Hi everyone, welcome back to Reissued. My name is Andrew. Before we get started today, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and take a moment to hit the subscribe button. I'm making DIY, home decor, men's fashion videos every week. I would hate for you to miss one. Um, today, I feel like I'm like giving a presentation. You know, I have a lot of information to share. I have bullet points, I have notes here on my laptop. Um, we're talking about gallery walls. So in a recent video, my home tour video, you can see that I have art just like sitting everywhere. Part of that is because I am selling paintings now and so I just will continue to have art everywhere. But also because I moved in here about two months ago and I was like feeling uh, that anxiety of committing to hanging a whole bunch of stuff on the wall and nailing all the holes and doing all of that. So um, everything was just sitting and so I thought this week I would hang art on the walls actually and I would show you that process a little bit and talk about how I put together what I hang on the wall and where within the gallery wall framework. Now if you don't know what a gallery wall is, welcome to planet earth. It's all about hanging a bunch of art together on a wall to make what would be sort of a smaller piece a part of a larger grouping to make something that feels kind of like an installation or a display, right? I feel like there are probably tons of videos on this and I know that I have definitely seen some tutorials and uh, blogs and opinions about this online. So there's probably gonna be a lot of what I say that other people have already said or that you might actually get better information from someone else depending on what your style is. However, I think I might have some ideas and opinions that might be a little bit different here, so here we go. So first of all, let's talk about the way that we choose art for our space. I tend to think of this as like two categories. There's the art that you choose for your home and then there's the art that like chooses you. Meaning like if you're a parent and your child like draws a picture or if you, for me, I hang a lot of, anytime I get like a, a really beautiful note that someone has written to me, like that's, would be nice to display in my house. I think it becomes a little tricky because those are not the kinds of things that you see in magazines or in like home decor stores because that would be like weird and personal. For me personally, I have this idea that my home will look like a magazine, but like those things don't really happen in magazines. So dealing with that is a little bit different than just finding art that works within your style to put on the wall, right? So we're gonna talk about those things separately. If we imagine that we're in a perfect world and you have a blank slate and you own nothing already and you're choosing art to go in a room or put on the wall, this is what I would think about. First of all, I am a big fan of choosing art that you really love. I think sometimes we can think about what would be the right thing to hang or what would be stylish or fashionable or whatever, um, which is fine, but I think those kinds of things, trends come and go, and so it's better to stick to things that you really respond to personally. So pay attention to your own intuition there in terms of what you like. As we start to think about what belongs in what room, scale is super important. For me, I'm hanging art in several different spaces. Some are really massive walls with really tall ceilings. So it would be pretty silly to put a bunch of little pieces of art all over that wall. It would just be like, make them feel really unimportant or small unless you were to have just like a massive number of things and make it more like an installation. Whereas for a smaller room, similarly, if you put really big art in there, it will just be kind of overwhelming. So I think just take into consideration the general scale of where you're placing your pieces to make sure they feel appropriate for the room and give the right amount of focus to the art. I think one of the most important factors when choosing things to go together for a gallery wall is color. Color can really be the thing that ties the pieces together and makes them feel cohesive. Um, it also is, can be the thing that really ties your whole room together and makes it feel cohesive. So for me personally, it's funny, I think I was in a position where I chose a lot of the art before I started buying a lot of furniture and decor for my home. Um, and so I ended up with colors and things that I didn't necessarily think that I would end up with. For instance, one of the very first pieces of art that I bought, I got for $5 at Goodwill in North Carolina, like I was just out of college. And it's this, um, woman that's pink and yellow. Yellow and pink are not really colors that I would choose for my house, but because I have that piece, it's just sort of lent me to go in that direction in terms of colors. So I think whichever comes first, like if you buy the art first, maybe you wanna factor those colors into your decor, or if you have decor first that you love, consider that when you're going toward your art, getting sort of similar colors. 
At the same time, I think there can be an idea where everything in your house has to match and you have, can have one color scheme and everything has to go together. I personally am a big fan of, I think of it like when you go into a store, like a, a home store, you walk around the different parts of the stores and different parts can have different vibes or different color schemes or energies. And so not everything has to go together like housewide. You can mix it up a little bit um, depending on what you like. Um, but thinking about in each particular space, whatever's in your eye, like that can have the same kind of color tones. Also when pairing things together, I like to think about different textures. I kind of divide art into three categories. You have your architectural pieces, which are like mirrors or frames or windows or that sort of like just general structure. And then you have um, paintings or things that don't, that aren't in the frame essentially. And then you have your framed pieces. And I personally have found that it's better to mix those things up and kind of um, have some variety. For instance, like if you were to hang a whole wall of frames, if you're not at the right angle and the light is shining on there, you're gonna get a whole wall of that glare, right? So for me, it's like if you're gonna get that from some pieces, of course, if it's in a frame no matter what, but if you mix that up with some paintings that aren't gonna have that kind of glare, it helps the things to look better from multiple angles. And I also think um, incorporating some architectural things in there kind of breaks things up and is, can act as a little bit of a palette cleanser. For instance, if you were to put entirely paintings all together, I think they would compete with each other. So it's nice to have some things just to kind of like willingly take a back seat and not compete for attention. One last thing to consider when choosing art is kind of the vibe of the room that it's going in. Most of the art that I have right now was either brought with me from way back or it was purchased physically for another space. So I'm just coming into that with like a pool of things to choose from. Um, but as I start to put things in rooms, the, the room definitely takes on a certain kind of vibe. I think like the office is very like, um, it's like colorful and creative and inspiring, whereas like the living room is much more kind of like dark and moody and a little bit like spooky Victorian apothecary kind of vibe is what I'm feeling. So I'll definitely be making or altering some of the pieces in there to work with that vibe more specifically. But just pay attention to like the energy of the room as well, thinking about how to use the art to push it either more in that direction or more away from that direction. When it comes to the art that chooses you, notes, kids' drawings, anything that's sentimental, family photos, those sorts of things. It took me a while to figure out how to do this in my house. I generally dedicate all of that to one area and one wall. For this apartment, I'm putting that in my bathroom. I have white frames. All white frames, everything goes together. Different sizes, different textures. Some things were bought at Michael's, some things are from Ikea. Just mixing up not only what the frame looks like, but also the depth level. I think that giving it some texture in terms of how things come out, how far things come out away from the wall can be helpful. But yeah, putting, putting everything in a similar color frame, I think is a really good step in terms of starting to make things feel a little bit more cohesive. I think also quantity is a big deal. I have a ton of frames, and as I continue to add to that collection, eventually I would like it to cover the entire wall. So rather than having like three little things together that may feel a little bit mismatched, expanding that out and going big with it and giving it more of that installation feel and covering a lot of space makes things feel a little bit more dramatic and like therefore a bit more edgy than just like three frame family photos that sit together, you know? Now in terms of hanging things on the wall, this is where I think that maybe other tutorials would do a better job. My approach to design and my aesthetic tends to be a bit more haphazard than most. So I know that some people when they do a gallery wall will like lay everything out on the floor and measure the distance between everything or create like a, temp a paper template on the wall where this is exactly where you hang things so that they're perfectly symmetrical. And that's just not, not only is that not my mode of creation, but that also is just like not what I look for in my spaces. I tend to like things to feel a little bit more unbuttoned and a little bit more um, eclectic and bohemian and kind of like they were just thrown up there, right? I think I want things to feel a bit Effortless. Effortless is the word that we'll go with there. Not messy, effortless. So when it came to me hanging art this week, I each time would sort of start out with the plan. I would kind of either set things in place or lay things out on the floor just to get kind of a general structure. And I do think that's important because I think if you just go in and start, it can be a little bit overwhelming. However, I found for both situations where I hung things on the wall that 
things definitely changed once I started hanging things. Either the scale was different than I thought or the placement ended up being a bit different. So then I kind of had to improvise by bringing in new pieces or painting other frames that I had. Um, and that will be a process that's ongoing. I like those kinds of processes to be ongoing, so I'm okay with that. But yeah, it was a bit of a haphazard process. So I have two additional thoughts here that I think are more specific to my style. Um, I think in considering like the larger tone of your space in your house, if you have a lot of art and you have multiple gallery walls, I would advise mixing things up a little bit. It could be a little weird if you go into every room and it like feels like there's the same types of pieces and the same scale and whatever. So for my house personally, I have three gallery walls. One is everything is hung, if they're larger pieces, it covers a lot of wall space. Two, I have the bathroom, smaller pieces, sentimental, all in the same frames. And then in my office space, I have a picture ledge where I can sit things up on there. I can rotate things in and out as I need to. They're sitting, which gives kind of, again, that casual feel. I think sometimes rather than hanging something on the wall, just like sitting it there, it just makes it feel like it's just there. You just left it there and you didn't think about it too hard. Again, I like that kind of like undone vibe. Um, and so I think that a picture ledge is a great thing for that. And if you're like me and you either have a lot of art cycling in and out of your home or if you just get bored easily, a ledge is definitely the best way to go so you're not poking holes in your walls every five seconds, which I probably will do anyway, but yeah, maybe not the best thing. Finally, I wanna talk about what I would call like the busy factor. When I first got into design, I think that was like at the height of minimalism where you would like open up a magazine and there would just be like a home that has like nothing. It would just be bare. And I like wanted that so badly because it's really beautiful. And that's, if you're like Marie Kondo, that's a wonderful way to live. Um, I think given my lifestyle and my interests, I'm just never gonna be one of those people. I like to have a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff just is necessary for the kind of work that I do. So I've become a much more comfortable with having a lot of things around. The style has shifted as well, but when you look in magazines at rooms that have a lot of stuff, it tends to be concentrated in like certain areas, right? So if you have like a, a living room and you have bookshelves, the bookshelves are gonna look really busy because they have lots of little stuff on them, but then the rest of the room is pretty clear. Where if you have a gallery wall, you have like a lot of art, a lot of textures and colors in one spot, and then the rest of the room is a little bit more bare. Um, so I think it's important when considering a space and thinking about a gallery wall, like if you have stuff everywhere and a lot of little stuff and it's accessorized everywhere, it feels like a mess. Whereas you can like make the disheveled sections kind of like sit in one area and then contrast that with something that feels a bit more streamlined or a bit more like clean. It can balance that out and make the room feel like not overwhelmingly like full, you know? I think that's an important thing to consider when doing the gallery wall thing for sure. So those are my tips. Um, keep in mind, again, this is my style personally. I just wanted to offer some ideas about putting things together and what things to look for to give you a little bit more of like an edgy, laid back kind of vibe. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you have any other tips or ideas that you'd like to share, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Um, I will see you next week. I hope you have a good one. Bye.